the great I am indeed Lord our helper who lives inside of us we magnify you we honor you this great evening we thank you we thank you we thank you Jesus we magnify your name we lift up your praises on high yes Lord you are worthy you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy to be lifted on high King of kings and Lord of lords ancient of days our God our Father we bless you and exalt your name. You are everything. You are everything to us. Yes, Lord. You are the victory that we enjoy. You are the reason of our being. You are the life that we live. We arise in this your victory. We bless your name. Call Rabba Saint Libre di do Sonde Bredia. Rima Brashe Catela Bradeco Zaprananda Baloje de Daza. Ribre to timbre do do sambre gadus bredias ba brande ba brashe prono gur bragimbre di do simbre dia we worship your king we magnify your name be glorified wherever you are worship the lord and acknowledge him yes let's acknowledge him today we are because he has made us to be we are breathing we are breathing because he has given us the bread of life yes we have seen this hour of the day because the Lord has been so gracious to us. The Lord has done it again in our lives. Yes, he has exempted us from many evils of the day and evils of the night. And there is a reason to bless his name and to glorify him. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name and forget none of his blessings. Yes, for he has forgiven your iniquities. He has healed your diseases, redeemed thy soul from destruction and filled your mind with good things and with loving kindness and renewed your youth like the eagles be glorified King of Kings. Yes, Lord, we adore you. The Lord raised that the people rejoice. You are the King, you are the Lord and therefore we praise your name. We acknowledge your King. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. Oh, hallelujah. What a wonderful evening. What a wonderful evening. Today, I especially welcome every one of you in this wonderful, wonderful moment that we are having before the Lord. And uh, we want to especially invite every one of you and receive you in this service. It is always a great joy to come to you and to be able to fellowship in the world and uh, have a moment of fellowship in the world. Please let us know where you are listening from and where you are getting us from. Those that are already tuned in on, uh, on the line that is uh, FB Live, we want to know where you are. We want to know uh, how God is blessing you. And uh, please let us know where you are and more importantly, uh, give us the feedback whether the sound is clear whether the visuals are okay and uh, again you share you can share please share share with us so that um, we can know that uh, you are there and be a blessing to someone else we thank god for that beautiful worship uh, service we have had right now and please when you come to this service don't just watch uh, watch and pray and also watch and worship it is both of them you do both of them at the same time and you are part of us. Those that are listening uh, in the, through the GGVFM, you are most welcome. While wote ambao natusikia kupitia radio GGVFM, karibu tena katika ibada ya jioni siku ya leo na wale ambao natusikiza kwa radio tuko live sahi. This is not a recorded message and uh, therefore you are listening to a live message wherever you are kule nyumbani, kwa ofisini, pale kwa gali. I believe that uh, we are going to have a wonderful time in the Lord. Now, I want to thank God that the Lord has used uh, this kind of a ministry that is reaching to all of us in a great way. People are being touched by God. Uh, we are receiving testimonies and the great doings of God. People getting healed, people getting saved, people receiving the divine interventions. Indeed, the ministry and the word of God is not bound there is no lockdown on the gospel as such. And, and we give glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm receiving a lot of uh, feedback 
uh, from people that are saying that they are being blessed uh, to this ministry that is coming to you people from uh, various cities in this country and indeed other places from the globe and it is very very encouraging and keep on praying we keep on praying for the church we keep on praying for families we keep on praying for the nation and indeed the nations of the world and we believe that we are on the winning side I believe by now that the spirit of fear has no place in your life you are not fearing that you, you will die before the end of this year no you will not die if you have heard my voice already by now and you have seen my face in whichever way I want you to know you will not die please keep on giving us information and help our technical team to be aware of any happenings very important glory to God now we've been taking a journey and we began all the way in the beginning of this month the month of May the Lord said is going to be our season of grace and divine preservation and therefore we are taking a journey on uh, grace and teaching and uh, looking on many aspects of grace now you will understand and agree with me that grace is one of the uh, especially nowadays is one of the most controversial uh, teaching or doctrine uh, in the body of Christ in our time and I think um, it's very important for us to have a time just to go through the scriptures and, 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 and be able to see uh, what really the Bible is saying because we have to say what the Bible is saying. Now, any Bible doctrine is not supposed to raise controversies, conflicts and divisions among the believers. It is not supposed to be so. I have always said that Jesus is so much for any one person, for any one of us to, you know, know him in completeness. He's too much. Even when you think that you have known him, after some time you discover, oh, there was another side of Jesus I had not known, but now I'm getting to know. And that is very important. So we have said, let, let me quickly take us through we have seen especially we've been able to see the grace um, has, has many dimensions and many aspects. We have seen like yesterday we saw the levels, different levels of grace. Very, very important. We saw how we can grow in grace. We say that we need faith to grow in grace because you can grow in grace. You can increase in grace. You need also faith to do that. You need the knowledge of God to increase in grace. You need to walk in humility to uh, increase in grace. He gives more grace to the humble. So there is grace and there is more grace. Very important. We talked about boldness. That you need to be bold. And that boldness comes from uh, knowing that you have received Jesus Christ the righteous. And that he has made you to be righteous. In Christ Jesus, we have become now the righteousness of God. And because of that, you can boldly come to the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace to help in a time like today. And to help spiritually, to help financially, to help health-wise, to help family-wise, you can come to the throne of grace to receive that grace and you come boldly. Now, please allow me to go, and, and by the way, don't miss tomorrow because tomorrow will be answering very important questions. I will also receive questions. You can even forward your questions. And then tomorrow we shall take time to answer some of the most disturbing questions when it comes to uh, the topic or the doctrine of grace, the teaching of grace. That's very important. I will believe God that we shall be able to answer that. So you can place your question if we are not able to answer today, then tomorrow, Friday, as we partake the Holy Communion, you can ask any question, and I suggest that you can ask right now, uh, or between today and tomorrow, and then tomorrow we shall have an ample time, just like we did last Friday, having a session of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. For those that are already in, I see, I see, I see 
Many of us that we are already in, I see Muteule, Kelvin, I see Gertrude Kagendo, my daughter, I see Saliga King, I see Blessed Dennis, I see Doro the Kagweria, I see uh, Gake Sabina, Nakuru, I, I see Faith, Faith, this is Faith, Tamisha, tuned in, in Egypt, wow, Egypt, God bless you, God bless you, Faith, all the way in Egypt, I see Emily Joy in Gobo. Wow, this is wonderful. I see Blessed Dennis from Embu. I see my daughter there, Joan Equitan in from Akutano Meru. Peter Getonga connected, uh, Sugo, Babu. I see Kavesh tuned in already. Uh, even Ryuki Destiny tuned in. Uh, Naomi, Naomi Waboi. I see you there. Hallelujah. Peter, Peter Morogo. And Waitera in Nakuru, God bless you, God bless you. Every one of you, I recognize your presence already in church on the net. Emmanuel Mweti, you are tuned in, Makutano, Meru, thank you, thank you so much, every one of you. Please, I will request that you share. Now, don't forget tomorrow, don't miss tomorrow because I'll be asking, I mean, I'll be receiving questions and by the grace of God and by the help of the Spirit of God I trust to answer you accordingly by the grace of God. Now today I just want us to look on what I'm calling important truths or important things you need to know about grace. Important truths about grace. Some of these important truths or important um, things that you need to know about grace and please keep on talking to us when you keep on talking to us um, you are helping us including our technical department if you are receiving us please let us know wow number one number one truth about grace that we need to understand it is that grace does not stand by itself alone Wow. Grace does not stand on itself alone. Now, please, please listen to, to me carefully before maybe somebody can begin to argue, no, 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 in, grace is enough, oh, Jesus is enough, and all that. I'm not refuting that Jesus is enough. Jesus is actually enough. And the finished work of the cross is enough. When we come to the teaching of grace, grace is powerful. Grace is great. Grace is very, very important. It is everything about our salvation. It is a grace that brings us to the kingdom. We get saved by grace. However, this statement is important that grace does not stand on itself alone. So that's why I cannot say I cannot say that if any other person is not preaching a message titled grace, he is teaching a wrong doctrine. No. Every, you need to know, we need to understand that the Bible in the New Testament has many aspects of God and God's nature. Grace is one of the major ones. That God expresses his nature to us because grace is actually a personality. It is Jesus himself. Grace is okay. You can, just, you can just bring it. Grace is not just a force. Grace is a personality. Is a personality. And, 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 and in the scriptures, we find that grace does not stand. And when I mean does not stand on, on its own, what I mean is that Jesus is not only the side of grace. That is what I mean. There are other dimensions of grace. That's very important in our time. Because there are people who are saying, me, I'm only a preacher of grace, nothing else. Every topic I preach, it has to be grace. And if someone else is preaching someone, something else, we tend to criticize and think they are not correct and think that they are either false teachers or false pastors or false something. Now, Paul is the one that goes to the depth of, of teaching grace. And, and look, he did not only teach grace only. 
he was quite intense on the teaching of grace but that is not the only thing that he taught for example i'll show you that uh, the bible shows that you need grace and labor and when i say grace and labor i don't mean that you need to work for your salvation or to get saved now first corinthians chapter 15 verse 10 he says paul there says i am what i am by the grace the grace of God and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain but I labored more abundantly than they all look at that what is Paul saying there was the grace of God that came upon me but I also went to labor I went to work if Paul had not gone to labor he would not have achieved the great works that he was able to achieve and, and be able to become such a great force in the kingdom. So Paul is teaching us there is grace and there is labor. And please let me quickly put it clear. I'm not talking about that you can labor to get saved. Getting saved, you get saved by believing in the finished work of the cross what jesus did on the cross it is enough you cannot do anything about it but to receive by faith but to experience the other dimensions and other other sides of the grace of god now in your life as a christian you will have to labor paul is telling us that so he's showing us grace and labor when it came upon me i went to labor so you cannot say that because I, am, I have received grace and grace is not of works, I will do nothing as a Christian and I'm expecting to see God in all entirety of my life. If you get saved, the grace of God is upon your life and you just stay at home. You don't go to work. You'll have no results. You will have no impact. You will have no fruits. You'll have no influence and yet you are full of grace. So that's why I'm saying grace does not stand alone. And therefore we cannot teach grace only. That you know grace of God. We cannot teach that. One dimension of grace. You know one dimension of grace. Because the true grace will make you to go to work. And when you go to work, you'll have results. Paul also taught other other areas of Christian life he revealed to us other aspects of God besides grace or together with grace for example Paul will teach us he teaches us about holiness the doctrine of holiness after he teaches us about grace he will teach us about holiness Wow hallelujah hey look there quickly Second Corinthians chapter 7 and uh, verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. That is Paul, the man that taught us about grace. He's teaching holiness. In Romans chapter 6, he takes time to teach about holiness. In fact, he says, now that we have received grace, is grace an occasion for us to live in sin? And he says, no, not at all. So I cannot say I'm a New Testament believer. I am under the grace that I do nothing. Jesus took away my sins before I sinned. Be, Jesus is taking away my sins that I'm now sinning and Jesus is taking away my sin that I'm planning to sin <laughs> now that is not how grace works it is true that Jesus took care of our fallen states but there are other truths of the Bible other doctrines of the Bible there are other forces spiritual forces that must work together with grace. B 
Because if you're not going to do anything, you see, he says, let not sin have dominion over you. In Romans chapter 6, let not sin. Oh yes, I think we can look at that quickly, please. Hmm, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hmm, Romans. Glory to Jesus. So these are very important things that we need to put in perspective. Oh, Ramahanda Bashekataya. Hmm. Hmm. Let me see. Yes, verse, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Verse 2. But God forbid. How shall we that are dead in sin live any longer therein? And he begins to really talk about um, our baptism, in baptism, that, that we are declaring that we have died with him. And by rising up from the water, we are declaring that we have risen. Then verse 12, he says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the last thereof. So it is something you can let in or let not. He says, let not. So that is something you are doing. It is not just something you are waiting. I am waiting for God not to let me fall into sin because of grace. No. It is something you are responsible as an individual. That's why we will teach about holiness. We will teach about hard work. We will teach other things. And all of them, they are anchored under grace. It is holiness under grace. It is going to work under grace. It is giving under grace. It is labeling under grace. So it's not isolated. So that's why you cannot just say, I'll preach about grace and grace only. And I will not teach about other things. In the New Testament. No. If there be someone else who has. God has called him to have. An influence. Let's say in the teaching of holiness. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. So grace is not to be taken alone. Number two. Very important. There are various dimensions of grace. Now, I think we know, maybe I can use uh, what we know about the fruit of the Spirit. Did you know Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 talks about the fruit of the Spirit? Not fruits, not plural fruits. It is a single fruit. It is the fruit of the Spirit. But then, nine dimensions. You talk about love, you talk about patience, you talk about self-control, you talk about... Um, endurance you talk about faithfulness the fruit of the spirit is one but nine dimensions so grace of god but with several other dimensions so you don't receive one dimension and say that is all there is about grace you don't experience one dimension of grace like the saving grace it is one dimensions of god grace the one that introduces the non-believer to the kingdom because by grace are ye saved through faith and not of your own works. By faith. By grace through faith. So the grace of God has several dimensions. Don't stick on one dimension and conclude everything. Because if you try to put to interpret everything on the dimension of saving grace and you're already a believer you say okay it is not on my own it is not on my own works so if God is going to prosper me by grace I will prosper I will not work because it is not of works if you read Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and say it is by grace not on my works and you say because of that grace I will not do anything then you will not enjoy all that God has and available for you so grace has several dimensions and we need 
to keep on knowing because you cannot enjoy in the kingdom. You do not enjoy what you do not know. Knowledge is key. How did we enjoy salvation? It was not until we got to know about salvation. Somebody had to tell us about salvation. And by that knowledge, we were able to receive. So that's why we need to know the other dimensions. For example, grace has another dimension. The sanctifying grace. Titus 2 verse 11 and 12. That you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that, that, that bringeth salvation to all men. He says that grace teaches us to say no to ungodliness and to worldly lusts so that we may live soberly. We may live righteously and godly in this present world. So there is a grace dimension that sanctifies helping us to live soberly as Christians. To live soberly as children of God. To live godly as children of God. That is sanctification. There is a dimension of God's grace. I'm still in the statement number two. That the, there, there are various dimensions of the grace of God. For example, the giving. I mean the grace for prosperity. The grace of prosperity. That you got born again. You receive the grace of salvation. You don't automatically become very prosperous just because you got born again. I hope now you are getting clear. That's why I'm saying there are various dimensions of the grace. There is a saving grace. There is a sanctifying grace. There is even the dimension of grace that is a prosperity grace. So next time when you say he's a prosperity preacher, it should be he is a preacher of the grace of prosperity because there is something like that in the Bible. You do not prosper in the kingdom automatically because you gave your life to Jesus. That now millions are coming on your way simply because you got saved. You have to advance further. You have to grow in grace and come with it to, to this encounter of the grace that brings about prosperity. Where is it in the scripture? Second, very, very important. Where is it in the scripture? Let me show you quickly. Let me, let me read for you quickly here. Hmm. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. Therefore, as ye abound in everything. Now, he was, he was speaking to the church of Corinth. Now, the church of Corinth was more spiritual than most of our congregation churches. They were speaking in tongues. Miracles were happening. They were prophesying. It was a very spiritual church. It was highly charged. It was high voltage spiritual church. But Paul begins to tell them to challenge them. Actually, it's a challenge. Therefore, as he abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love for us, see that ye abound in this grace also. So it is something they had not yet started enjoying. Yet these are believers. They are born again. They are born again. These are not non-believers. And Paul is still saying, see that ye abound in this grace also. So they had not yet manifested this grace. And he was giving the example of the Macedonian churches. And he was referring to Macedonian churches as an example. So it's very important. I was just using that to help us to know or to see there are various dimensions. So don't stick on one dimension. There are many dimensions. There are several dimensions of grace. The grace that saves. After you are saved, there are many other dimensions. The same grace, but many dimensions. The same fruit, the fruit, but many aspects of the fruit, just like in the fruit of the Spirit. Number three statement that is important when it comes to the grace. To the unbeliever, listen to this. To the unbeliever, and every unbeliever, unbeliever is somebody who has not yet received Jesus Christ. He may be a Christian because he goes to church. Maybe you're calling yourself a Christian because you go to church. But an unbeliever is somebody that has not yet received 
Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. He has not encountered salvation by believing in Jesus Christ and confessing him. So to the non-believer, grace is the unconditional love of God offering the gift of forgiveness and eternal life. I hope it's not too long. To the non-believer, grace is the unconditional love of God offering the gift of forgiveness and eternal life. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh yes. To the non-believer, grace is available. If you say you are not born again, grace is available. It is the unconditional love of God that offers you forgiveness of sin and eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life or everlasting life. Oh, that is very important. So grace is available today. You don't have to stay another one day without receiving this grace, which is unconditional. This is where God is not asking you to do anything. He wants you to receive everything that he has offered through Jesus Christ our Lord. That is how you get saved. Salvation or getting saved is not something you do. It is something you receive. You receive the gift of God for forgiveness and eternal life by faith. But you see, even in this life, they don't force gifts into your life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Oh, Rabbi Shakata. Do you know how much God loves you? You are hearing my voice right now. Jesus loves you so much that he put no condition on how to get saved just but to believe in him. There's no condition. There's no condition. There's no condition. The thief who got saved. Oh, Rabba Sheka Tada Gada Gada. The thief who just got saved because that guy was the first one to get saved. The thief who got saved. Did you, did you know he was the first one to get saved? Immediately Jesus died like this, that guy. He said, Oh, you know, he had told Jesus that, Jesus, when you come back, remember me. And Jesus told him, Today, you see, that was an expression of his belief in Christ. Mm. He said, today where the righteous are, that's where you shall be with me also. Oh, Rama, he is a God. Can you just imagine? He was even naked. The thief was naked on the, on, the, on the cross because the thief was also on the cross. He was naked. Jesus did not ask him, go first of all, and wear a long dress so that you can be saved. The guy was naked, yet he got saved. Jesus did not tell him, go and, 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 and register and fill the book of the church with your names every day so that you can be saved. The guy was there. He did not have a, even a chance to go home. A naked guy with blood. He did not even tell him, go and give your resources to everybody so that you can get saved. The guy... He was a thief. But the moment he believed in Jesus Christ on the cross, the guy received this grace, which is unconditional love of God that offers forgiveness and eternal life. That guy, we shall find him in heaven. You can ask him questions when you find him in heaven. Because he'll be there. So to the unbeliever, grace is the unconditional love. Hmm. That's why even the worst of the sinners can be saved. Number four statement about grace that is important. Oh, Goza. I feel the grace of God flowing right now. If you're not born again, I'm shortly I'm praying for you to get saved. Please don't spend this night without receiving this amazing grace that saves wretches like us. Don't face tomorrow. How can you go? 
to sleep before receiving this unconditional love of God. Oh yes, and forgiveness of sin. Don't say, I will always have another time. This is the hour. This is the time. Number four, the prodigal believer, now listen carefully. The prodigal believer, to the prodigal believer, the grace, oh, Shanda Dagada, is God's uh, outstretched arm for restoration. To the prodigal believer, because we have prodigal believers, there are still sons. Jesus talked, talked about the two sons. He talked about the younger son and talked about the elder son. Now, the, the, the younger son, after he received, remember, is a son, not a neighbor, not a nephew, not a something else. Is a son, so has a relationship with the father. And he said the kingdom of God is like. So this is a sign. The prodigal son in Luke 15 is a type of a believer who is more of a runaway believer because we are believers that are more of a runaway they have a relationship with god they are born again yes but they have broken fellowship they still have a relationship with god because they are sons of god but they have a broken fellowship with god they no longer are comfortable talking to god they no longer have god as the authority over every decision they make in life they are more of independent they stay away they don't consult with god they don't mind what god is saying they don't mind god's plan for their life they are far away in a far country just like the prodigal son they are running their life as if it were their own they are prodigal believers they're still believers but are prodigal so the grace of god to such a person who is a believer so who you ni muamini ambaye ndio ameokoka lakini anakaa mbali na mapenzi ya Mungu anakaa mbali na uwepo wa Bwana anakaa mbali na instruction hana muongozo wa Mungu anatawara maisha yake and i think so many people are there there are so many christians who are there they are running their life they don't want the control of god anything their finances their families do you know there are people who run their families like their own small empires their businesses and their finances they say this is not anything spiritual this is my own decision relationships they can jump from this relation to another one anyhow anywhere anytime to whosoever because they are in control of their lives so the grace of god to this the prodigal believer is god's hand outstretched for restoration you can have a restoration into the fellowship you have a relationship but now you need a restoration grace is god's hand outstretched to receive you back home for fellowship and when you come back home you realize the things that 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 you were not enjoying in the kingdom now they are available the prodigal son came saying i am not worthy before you the father made him worthy the prodigal son said oh I don't deserve anything actually i need to live less than a servant the father said no 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 you are very important to me yes because now this is my son who was dead but now he lives oh yes i have received him back so there is a chance the grace of god is an outstretched hand of restoration to every to every prodigal believer and there are many of them and when that happens you will find again the joy of salvation yes you have the salvation inside of you but where is the joy of salvation why are you no longer excited about talking about your experience with God where is the joy of salvation when you are restored back into the fellowship you have a relationship but you need a restoration to the fellowship then you find the joy of salvation. You find the father is now killing the fatted of all. You find that the father now is, is making a party just for you. You find that there is so much in the father's house that you are going to enjoy this particular time. Wow. Number five, 
He said, number five. Number five. To the believer. Now listen to this. To the believer with a healthy fellowship with God, grace is the ever unfolding nature of God. I feel the anointing there. I have the anointing. Do you want to your money? <laughs> to the believer with a healthy relationship God's grace is the ever unfolding nature of God hmm. Paul said 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 9 he says for we know in part we prophesy in part Paul the great says we know in part. We prophesy in part. So Paul is saying, no. You see, Paul, the man who wrote three quarters of the New Testament, when you read his writings, you can see that this man knows so much. Paul knows so much. I think for me, he knows so much than the rest of the apostles. Whatever that is not clear in other letters, of course, Every apostle and all the letters in the New Testament, they are important. But if you are not getting clarity somewhere else, refer to Paul. For example, if you are not getting clear about the family life, go to Paul. Read all the letters of Paul. You'll find exactly how a believer should live. So he knows so much. Is a man who said that I count everything has done so that I may know him. That I may know him. And this is a man who says that 14 years ago, I know of a man it is believed that the man was talking about was himself. Who was taken to the third heavens and he was shown things that it is not right for any mortal man to speak them out. So he knows so much. Paul has so much. He has, he knows some things that we, he did not even speak them out because he saw things that it is not right for any, it's not permitted for any mortal man to speak them. So there are things that Paul never spoke. Paul knows so much with all the abundance of knowledge that Paul has about God and in God, about the kingdom. He still says, we know in part. And therefore we prophesy in part. Wow. Hallelujah. So no matter what I will ever know. In the kingdom. And in God and about God. It is still a part of the whole. The whole is so much. Oh Rabakata. I saw this scripture. First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 9. And set me free. I was set free by this scripture because I came to discover that no matter how much I know, I have not known everything. I, it is still a part. It's still a part. It's still a part of what? It's still a part. No matter what I know, all that I know is still a part of what I should know or what there is to be known. And therefore, there is nobody who can play Monopoly of knowledge of God. This is how I see it. When I saw this scripture, I saw Jesus as too much for any individual to know him absolutely complete. So what happens is, every one of us, Jesus will reveal himself in one, some parts, this part. Maybe the parts I have seen about Jesus Maybe it is a part of his hand. So that's why I'm seeing his miracles so much. Maybe another person, he has seen the part of Jesus, his mouth. <laughs> that's why he has had, <laughs> he has seen the part of Jesus, his mouth. <laughs> that's why this person is hearing Jesus. He has so much to say about Jesus. Maybe another person, what he has seen, the part of Jesus he has seen is his leg. That's why this person is a missionary. He keeps on traveling. Jesus wants me to travel. So every one of us, no matter what we know, remember, this is very important, is a part of the whole. 
And to the believer who has a fellowship, a healthy fellowship with Jesus Christ, this person, grace to this person is an ever folding nature of God. Now, now I, ho I hope you have understood the, the last three points. We said, now we, we say that to the non-believer, grace is the unconditional love of God to give him a gift. So, grace is applicable to the non-believer. To the runaway believer, that is a believer that has a broken relationship, grace is also available to bring the person back. To the believer that has a good fellowship with God, this person can still experience deeper and higher dimensions of grace because to this person, grace is the ever unfolding nature of God. God is so much. God is so much. Believe you me, that no matter how much you know God today, there is a side of God you have not known him yet. So we should ever be stretching and stretching to know him. I want to know him more. I want to, to know him more. I want to know him more. I want to know him more. I want to know him more. I will not settle with this part. I'll keep on pressing and pressing. So every prophecy is a part. So maybe the prophecy I have is a part of another one. That's why you should not judge anybody. That's why if the part of seen Jesus is the one of just holiness, know that there is another one of grace. If the part of seen of Jesus is the one of faith, I should know there is another one of joy. If the one I've seen of joy, there's another one of perseverance and many parts of Jesus. So grace, please get to know those very important statements. Oh, that is powerful. That is powerful. We say number one that grace does not stand on its own. You cannot just say I'm a believer of grace only. If it is anything else, I don't believe in it. Grace is sufficient, but does not just work. It is not the only thing in the kingdom. We need to teach about holiness. We need to teach about hard work. We need to teach about perseverance. We need to teach about even suffering for Christ. All this. We say number two, that there are various dimensions of grace. It's not one-sided. We have said that grace, number three, we have said to the non-believer, it is unconditional love of God that offers the gift of forgiveness and eternal life. And to the prodigal believer, it is the arm of restoration. Grace is the arm of restoration that will bring you back to a sweet, intimate, and sweet fellowship with the Father. And of course, number five, to the believer that already has a healthy relationship, it is the ever unfolding nature of God. I pray that we shall not stop at this. I pray that we shall be able to stretch further. I pray that everyone will have an encounter with the grace of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Please, if you are not born again and you are there, don't say another day. Don't say another time. Don't say when the churches are, are open. I want to get saved when the church churches are open. I'll be there in the first Sunday. We don't know when. And this is the day of salvation. When you hear this message, this is the day of salvation. And you can actually get saved wherever you are right now. Atakamo komharipako pakazi, aida kwa ofisi, ama weni mtu wa boda unagojea mteja wa pili, ama weni mechanic, sasa unataka kufix the brakes, you can get saved. Ama uko kwa una, atakamo unatembea mahali popote, kwa nyumbani pale. You are in your office, wherever you are. You are secretary, you, you are the director. Whosoever you are, you can receive Jesus Christ right now. Not another day. And it doesn't take time. It just takes Jesus. And it is now. Please let me pray with you right now. I bring the word of God to you with love. Because Jesus loves you. If you are not born again, come out your coke and your 
Don't even mind those that are with you. Salvation is very personal. And we shall stand before God individually. Say, my Bwana Yesu. Nakuja. Bwana Yesu. Siku ya leo. Nakuamini. Na nakupokea. Napokea wakovu wako. Napokea msamaha wa dhambi. Na amini ya kwamba ulikufa na ukafufuka. Napokea uzima wako. Asante Yesu kwa kuniokoa. Nimiamini ya kwamba. Nimefanyika kimbe kipia. Mimi ni mwana wako. For those that need it in English. Say Lord Jesus I believe in you. I believe that you died and rose again. I believe that you died for me. I receive the forgiveness of sin and I receive eternal life inside of me. I confess I'm born again. I am a child of God. Thank you Jesus for saving me. Amen and amen. Oh, I bless you. I declare the hand of God upon you. The grace that saves the sinner has just manifested upon your life. Unconditionally, you are loved by God. Unconditionally, you are saved and forgiven and restored back to the fellowship with God. And Satan has no power over your life. I pray that the Lord shall preserve you and keep you. And that you shall enjoy the walk with the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. His spirit come upon you and empower you for kingdom life. In the name of Jesus. I pray now for the believers that were like the prodigal son. Yes, they have a relationship. Lakini hata wewe unasikiaga ukombali. Unakama kama Adam wakati aliulizu wako wapia kasema mejificha. I pray that the grace of restoration. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I receive the grace of restoration in fellowship. I know that you still love me. And I'm restored back by the blood of Jesus. I'm forgiven of every sin. The guilt consciousness, no more again. The sin consciousness, no more again. I'm restored back. Thank you, Lord, because you have restored me back. To the believer that is already in the fellowship with the Lord, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. May you go to deeper dimensions of revelations of God. May you go to another unfolding of the nature of God. May you get deeper and deeper. May you get another part of God. May you get another part of divinity. In the mighty name of Jesus. May you move from this level to higher levels, greater levels. In the mighty name of Jesus. And to those that are sick right now. I speak God's healing power over your life. He says that um, you shall declare a thing and it shall be so. I want to join up with your faith right now. Declaring your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. I declare your freedom from sickness, diabetes, hypertension, tumors and growths. I command them out of your system. I speak healing upon your stomach and every organ. Your liver, your intestines, your pancreas, um, your spring, your every organ, your blood, your body, your bones. Your skin, your eyes, your head, your brain, your nervous system, the backbone. I speak healing right now. I command order in your body from this hour. Receive God's healing power. Now begin to exercise your faith wherever you are. Begin to exercise your faith. You can walk, you can lift, you can do something. And believe that you are healed because you are healed. The healing power of God is already in you. you. Whatever you are, you can do it. You can stand and exercise your faith. And let it be so. You are healed. No doubt. Corona has no power over you. I declare a covering over your life. In the name of Jesus. I declare a covering over those that are not infected. And those that are infected, I declare healing right now. Lord, heal them and let them know you have healed them. Lord Jesus, Koraba Shekataya, Remaganda Basetataya. I speak power of God upon the works of your hands, upon your business, upon anything that you're doing for your livelihood. I declare a breakthrough from this hour. And as you practice kingdom giving, I declare the grace of prosperity begin to function in your life. 
neema ya kustawi neema ya kuendelea neema ya kushinda iwe pamoja nawe kwanza siku ya leo ya kuongezeka na hata wakati huu when there is a great challenge may you see the lord's goodness his grace upon your life in the name of jesus heaven of father we thank you comfort those that have lost their beloved through the floods and the rains over this nation and over corona thing father we thank you comfort them we pray that lord you may influence every decision making in this government of this country in the mighty name of jesus and lord even to the governments of the nations in the mighty name of jesus thank you father bless the viewer bless everyone that has followed on radio and also on facebook more grace receive more grace it shall be a great night i'll see you tomorrow i want to appreciate every one of you that been able to follow wow thank you every one of you thank you every one of you i see many people I see many people, many people that joined. I see uh, Carol Mike. I see Mothoni Warowe. I see Millicent Oguta, my daughter. I see, uh, I see Sarah, Asa Man, that is Sarah Mwigai, I know you. I see um, Anne Stasia. I see Emily Joy. I see Carlos McKenna. I see Godi Mwesh. And we said once again, I see you there. Very, very powerful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, every one of you. I appreciate. Please keep on sharing this. You can even host a watch party after this. I believe we have received something. Tomorrow will be a time we'll be recapping. Tomorrow we are sparing that it's going to be Holy Communion service. So you shall be ready at the same time. And then we will endeavor to answer some of the pertinent questions as regarding the teachings and the doctrine of grace if you can you can send the question as early as now and then tomorrow we'll be able to answer i want to appreciate every one of you thank you so much the lord bless you until they come your way remember remember katika radio saa moja na nusu tutakuwa na mchungaji mtumishi wa mungu ambaye ni apostle john gasheru tutakuwa pia atakuwa na tuongoza pale na kutuelezea mambo ya book of revelations mambo ya eight times mambo ya 666 we, we 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 had him on tuesday it was powerful leo atakuwa naendelea kutoka pale saa moja na nusu uh, apostle john gasheru a uh, great man of god and our spiritual father for those that of the family of ggv na itakuwa ya ajabu katika radio ggv fm na asante sana remember while i'm about to kombali you can always get us online get us online that is uh radio ggvfm you can you simply need to go to the page of ggvfm and then you shall find a link where you can listen to ggvfm online so from 7 30 we shall be there god bless you thank you so much it was a great joy to come to you always loving you here is bishop patrick Kariuki. god bless you